Last year's wildfire season was a real monster. But what can we do to prevent a repeat in the future? Firefighters and state leaders say New Mexicans need to prepare for future fires right now. And that means thinning the vegetation around your property if you're in the woods and also reporting anything suspicious as soon as you would see it. Whether you see smoke, fire, uh, maybe uh, camps where there shouldn't be a camp in an open space. If you note that camp, it helps if you write down the best description of the location. Now, preventing wildfires is already hard enough. And one area we hope to never see a large scale wildfire is our beautiful sandias. But climate scientists say the long term outlook is not good because they're sounding the alarm now about New Mexico's wildfires in the future. And Chief Meteorologist Eddie Garcia explains what's really at stake here. I've been to Albuquerque once and I did ride the tram up to the top yeah. of the mountain nearby and anybody that's done that has seen the very prominent change in vegetation. But the tram experience could really change in coming decades. Matt Fitzpatrick, a climate scientist from the University of Maryland, says by 2080, the Albuquerque area will look more like today's El Paso. But is this really the future of the Sandias? Fitzpatrick warns wildfires could gradually make that happen. And wildfire is going to be a, a component of that change is that as forests burn, especially at low elevations, if it stays hot and dry, those forests are not going to come back in those places. And Fitzpatrick says preventing those wildfires is only going to get harder. So you could be looking at, at multiple year or decade long, uh, what we would call mega droughts. And so that, of course, all translates into increased probabilities of wildfires. So, you know, Albuquerque in 2080, um, you know, I think if things continue to go the way they are, there's a high probability that the lowest elevation forest will be lost. Forest rangers are now doing what they can to prepare. Some prescribed burns were started in the lower elevations during the winter. And Fitzpatrick says there's still time to slow down climate change. It's not too late. We can still uh, hope to avoid the worst of, of uh, the effects. And Eddie, we talk about, you know, the term mega drought so often. Oh, yeah. All the snow that we had in the winter in our mountains, is that going to do anything to really help us in this situation? So it, we're talking about the short term here, right? Yeah. Um, compared to where we were last year, yeah, it's going to fill up the river basins. It's going to help bolster our reservoirs. But last year was unprecedented. Yeah, so, it was. I mean, we're, we're talking about, a, you know, in some cases, a 100-year event. Mm. So compared to that, yeah, it's going to be better. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, we're still in that drought, even though we've seen some improvement. But we all got to be careful. So just because last winter went pretty well for us, it doesn't mean everything's solved. But right. it, it could essentially help going into this season. For sure, yeah. Nice. And, and the term mega drought basically means that uh, compared in the last 1,200 years, mm -hmm. uh, we're looking pretty bad. But in the short term, it's these small gains, right? Yeah. But it's kind of like the marathon. Yeah, you not know, the sprint. We had a good sprint mm -hmm. this winter, but we need sustained uh, improvement in the moisture. So the outlook for the spring is about average. Okay. A um, little warmer than usual, but compared to last year, it'll it'll be soggy in comparison. Thank goodness. We need that. All yeah. right.